Playboy After Dark, taped on December 3rd, 1969. just in time because the Ike and Tina Turner Review are about to start wailing in the rumpus room. Come on in and join us.
It's a pleasure to welcome a longtime friend, Louis Nye, to the party. And Louis, it's it's great to see you again. And you're looking uh, very trim. I think oh, you haven't you? Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to see you. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. But you look like you've lost a little weight. Are you uh, doing a diet thing? Or? Oh, probably not. I don't think I've lost any weight. I, I love food too much. Yeah. So I must have gained maybe, uh, let's say, 15 pounds since you've seen me last. <laughs> but you can't tell. <laughs> you know why you can't tell? Why is that? Louis? Because I'm wearing a rubber suit. <laughs> <laughs> it works well. It yeah, it's put out by got, Freddie Rubbo. <laughs> they've got all these crazy, uh, crazy diets now. Barbie's yes. on a, on a diet, and uh, I think I may try the drinking man's diet. That sounds like the best. <laughs> The best yeah, kind of thing. But they've got a diet now where they, uh, you know, calories don't count, mm -hmm. and they're doing yeah. a thing now with, where you supposedly you can eat ice cream and candy and all kinds of uh, cake and everything, and oh, still yes. stay on a diet. Still be perfectly yeah. proportioned, but yeah. uh, who wants to be perfectly proportioned, 900-pound man? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, can I tell you the truth? I drink to it. I'm against diets. Here, I'll drink. Oh, I'll drink yes. Now, here, here, friends. I may write a book for people who hate dieting, you know? I'll buy it. I'll call it Love's Nayette. It's a Not book, yet. yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a book of forgiveness. Oh. We need more of that in the world. Yeah, well, that's a contradiction for no diet. A contraction, rather, for no diet. For no diet. The subtitle is Eat, 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 I understand. <laughs> Listen, Hef, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't, uh, I would like to ask at this time, hello. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask Sh that. Yes. <laughs> shouldn't uh, people be fat and guilty instead of thin and miserable? Yeah. I think yes. so. Yeah, another thing, so. another thing, Hef, if I may say, is I'm against diet pills. <laughs> I tried them and they they didn't work. I had uh, I had one before each meal. That's uh, let's see, that's ten a day. <laughs> that's not the way to die, Lou. But man, I've got a great thing. I'm going to write it up in a magazine article. Maybe you could put it in Playboy. Oh, goody two shoes. <laughs> because this thing combines a sex urge with a food urge. <laughs> <laughs> you cure both at once. I don't it's like called. That part. Oh, you don't? Oh, silly boy. You know what it's called? It's. It's, it's called. Take a head of lettuce to bed. <laughs> oh, I always oh. forgot my present. Oh. Yes, well, all this conversation is making me hungry. It is. Yes, I. I uh... This is my most treasured possession. It's the called weak. the weak man's bookie. Diet. Yeah, it was willed oh. to me by King Farouk. <laughs> you can get hungry at nine and just open a book and you'll feel better. You just groove with it. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, props. <laughs> yes, well, yeah. that's I, uh... <laughs> I'll tell you, I, all this makes me feel. Oh, <laughs> you see how many people are taking the diet serious around here. They're all reaching for anything they can get. Well, would you like a little something to eat? Maybe we can have the kitchen whip up something yes, for us. Yes, I, I and, uh, would like uh, something. May I make a phone call? <laughs> Music? <laughs> music? Can we have a little music for his phone call, please? <laughs> Hello, Sam's Delicatessen. <laughs> Sign up an order of law. That's not bad. A girl of 18, make sure that she's lean. A side order stars up above. I'll put the phone down. And listen, Sam's Delicatessen. See if the moonbeams are fresh. And a girl who make my heart quicken <laughs> and half a boiled chicken. <laughs> I swear by each knish up above <laughs> that I love that order. Our gypsy violinist on that number doesn't usually play with so much vibrato. As a matter of fact, he's from Nashville, Tennessee. He's going to swing a Cajun fiddle for us now, Doug Kershaw. Oh. Thank you. 
understand that you not only play Cajun fiddle, but you are a Cajun. Yes, I am a Cajun. Uh, a people, the Cajun people, I should say, are from Louisiana. That's why I was born. You came from Louisiana originally. Yeah. Aren't the Cajuns uh, originally from up further north? Yes, they are. They originally six generations back come from Normandy into Acadia, which is now Nova Scotia. And then, what, your family came on down from yeah, there? Yeah, through the years, you yeah, exiled from uh, English rule. All along the eastern seaboard, you'll find French people. And I got down to the tip end of Louisiana, you can't go anymore. Sort of like French kissing an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand the Cajun music. Your own, <laughs> your own music is, uh, is, is now on the way to the moon. Um, yes, it is. It really is. I tell you what happened. Hold I, that for him, child. Would you hold that? <laughs> Sue it. Thank you. The other morning, I was watching television, the news, when they, uh, f the first live broadcast from Apollo 12, mm -hmm. okay? And they were, uh, uh, the guy was, uh, Conrad Jess, was playing his favorite music, so I listened to San Antonio Rose. Pretty soon, I hear Doug Kershaw singing Louisiana Manor. <laughs> from the moon. History. How to settle for Louisiana history. Well, I really. think that uh, it might be an appropriate cue for you to do Louisiana Man here and now. Long hair music. <laughs> Can't write a hit joke every time. <laughs> Well, at birth, my mom and papa called a little boy Ned and raised him on the banks of a river bed. A houseboat tied to a big tall tree, a home for my papa and my mama and me. The clock strikes three and papa jumps to his feet. Already mama's cooking papa something to eat. At half past, papa, he's ready to go. He jumps in his bureau head down the bayou. Fishing line strung across the Louisiana River Gotta catch a big fish for us to eat Setting traps in the swamps, catching anything you can Gotta make a living, he's a Louisiana man Gotta make a living, he's a Louisiana man Bushcraft heights Well, 
Billy called my mama Rita and my daddy Jack. The little baby brother on the floor, that's Mike. And Brad and Lynn are the family twins. Big brother Eddie's on the bio fishing. On the river floor, Papa's great big boat. And that's how my papa goes in the town. It's on every bit of a night and a day. They even reach a place where people Hardly wait until tomorrow comes around That's the day my papa takes the birds to town Papa promised me that I could go He even let me see a cowboy show Now was it in you for the first time then I told my pa I gotta go again Papa said, son, we've got lies to run Let's come back again with Mr. Quirk to be done Fishing lines strung across the Louisiana River Gotta catch a big fish from the street Triple traps in the swamp Catching anything you can Gotta make a living He's a Louisiana man 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 here in the library with two of the most interesting people in show business today, Rex Reed and Patty Duke. And uh, I don't think either one of them need much introduction, but Rex, as you know, is uh, one of the most controversial, interesting, and uh, important, I think, critics of the day, who uh, very recently has gotten involved in the other side of the business, starring in Myra Breckenridge. And I'd like to start things off here by uh, reading a little excerpt from Rex's new book, Conversations in the Raw, which is from his interview with, uh, with Patty Duke, where Rex okay. says... <laughs> okay. okay, Rex. She does come on like a pint-sized Jimmy Cagney. But nice. S but That's stick nice. around. <laughs> but stick around, you can hear the heartbeats. It's the only way people will listen. When she was a kid, all her interviews were conducted on sheets of mimeographed paper with stock answers. If anyone asked how it felt to be a child star, she would turn to answer number 40. <laughs> I suspect, I suspect knowing how Rex works, that when, uh, when Rex interviewed you, you probably... Now she writes all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer, and the answer. Well, it's interesting to have both of you here uh, this evening at the same time, because Patty has been in the business since how old were you when you first... Seven. Seven years old. It was really, 16 a, a years, lifetime. Uh, the end of this week. <laughs> Incredible. And Rex, of course, uh, established himself as a as a critic and now finds himself on the other side of the camera. And what is that like? Yeah. Are you wondering about the reviews of the film? Well, mine Personal reviews? Be, I, I'm wondering what mine's going to be. That's what I meant. Smashing. <laughs> Everybody gets a... I'm thinking of doing a whole review and only talking about myself. <laughs> Well, there have been a lot of rumors that, uh, you know, that, that one of the motivations in getting into this thing were, was, uh, you know, the chance to, to really do a, a review, possibly a book, about uh, Myra Breckenridge. And do uh, well, you think there may I be a book in it? Oh, there's a book in it. I don't know whether I'm going to write it or not. Uh, it's, no, there's a book in it, but I don't know. I feel like I'm s privy to such uh, confidential information about the picture that it might be a little bit like blowing the whistle on everybody. What are you laughing at? Oh. <laughs> That's never been one of his problems with the man. I was never the subject before, though. Yes. Right. You think it may be too self-revealing? Uh, Oh, I'll tell anything about me, you know. I mean, I, that's the biggest problem they have with the whole movie is that I have such a big mouth that I tell everything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of worried about telling it about everybody else, you know. Well, how do, the, how do the other performers in the film feel about that, knowing, you know, this double uh, life well, that you know. live? Just about every other day, Raquel Welch... Uh, makes some kind of marvelous comment on the set, and then she always turns to me and says, don't print that book. Uh, I might do a book, though. Uh, I think it's going to be very difficult for you not to do one. <laughs> it's, it's, I think everybody's expecting one at this point. Yes. But the movie itself has been absolute chaos. I mean, it's... Uh, well, I've, if you were going to pick one film, you know, for this time, you really pick 
I guess so, because this movie kind of represents the very, the last death row <laughs> of the old Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, the millions of dollars that are being pumped into this thing, you know, one day, one afternoon, we, uh, our, we have a rather unusual director, to say the least, and he uh, came to the set one day and says, I don't feel like shooting anything today. I think I'm just going to shoot food. So they, they went out and they bought $2,000 worth of food for him to show on camera, you know, and that's all we did that day. There are many, many days when we are... Uh, well, one day I arrived on the set and I was told on the call sheet to report to stage eight, and I walked into stage eight, and the whole place was completely empty except for two extras who were sitting there, and I, one of the things I've learned in Hollywood is that extras are not called extras, they're called atmosphere. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so the uh, two atmospheres were sitting there. <laughs> And, and, and one of them, I said, where is everybody? And they said, oh, uh, they, they didn't like it here. They decided to, to, to go away somewhere. I said, well, where did they go? And they said, I don't know. So I had to go to the production office and find out where everybody was. They were down on the Western Street, and they were shooting something else. It wasn't even in the script. So every day you arrive, and you don't know what you're going to say that day. Everything is written on the set. It's all improvised. Many, many times we get there and we don't get a shot before 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh, and then they wait until 7 or 8 at night when you have bags under your elbows to come in for the close-ups. You know? <laughs> it's, uh, it's just wild. I've never been involved in anything like it. There's another curious parallel here. Um, you did Valley of the Dolls. Mm -hmm. Sorry for mentioning it, but... Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I accept your apology. In amongst your excellent films. And uh, you're know, somewhere in between there. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I know. I think I know Patty well enough, and you know where she's at. To mm -hmm. I think she'd agree with that. But now they're doing something, and that's also 20th century, isn't it? Oh, uh, uh, and now they they're they're doing that. something. They have else. a suicide wish over there at that studio. Well, a lot of studios <laughs> do these days. But uh, with with. Um, they're now planning a new Valley of the Dolls, which I'm sure you've heard about. Yes. Which yeah. sounds like Return. even it's be, I think it's beyond yeah. the Valley of the yeah. Dolls. Right? It's beyond all comprehension. <laughs> which, uh, it's a sexploitation. It has film. No, nothing it to do with Valley of the Dolls. No, it's beyond comprehension at all. Make a bloody fortune. Yeah. And See, that's, that's exactly the real. what they're going to do. They're not pouring any money into it. Russ Meyer is going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a skin flick. But that's the real tragic it's thing about Hollywood much. right now is that people are so willing to jump on the bandwagon and do whatever they can to make money. Even though the people who are making the films don't believe in them, they'll do anything to make a buck because the movie business is in such a weird uh, well, position. Well, one of the things that makes it particularly interesting and weird and maybe offers some hope is that, uh, that the old formulas don't work anymore. The films this year that are making the money are not the pictures that they've done yeah. with the old formulas. Yeah. It's yes, the unexpected some, things by independent producers. Yes, but some of them are also very good. And I'm That's all, my I'm, point. And I'm all for independent filmmaking. I think uh, Patty just did a picture called Me, Natalie, oh, which was... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which I, I thought was an absolutely remarkable film. I mean, I thought it was honest and, and, and dear and, and moving, and I thought she was also wonderful in it. I think she should be nominated for an Academy Award. This I agree. Year. Well, what is, what is indeed interesting is that uh, while the old Hollywood and the old formula concepts are doing something that seems to be a death rattle, that uh, motion picture making has never been more inventive, never more exciting because of the new producers. Yes, but uh, the new producers don't want to work for studios. I mean, when mm. you get to a big studio and you find out that you have to spend all this fantastic money that's not in your budget just on studio rental space and on technicians you don't need and dialogue people that you don't need and all kinds of people that you don't need, then suddenly your movie is a six million dollar movie and all you wanted to do is grab a movie, you know. So that's why the smart people are making movies independently and then they're releasing them through, through uh, film companies. Uh, Mario Breckenridge doesn't fall into any kind of sane category that I can think of. It's not an independent movie. It's not even a studio movie because the, the director isn't uh, even listening to anybody at the studio. He's making his own movie. Uh, and, uh, Which nobody's sure about. Oh, I've got to ask you what it's like to simply, you know, and apart to all the other curious things about the film, what it's like to be the alter ego of, my, of uh, Raquel Welch. In other words, uh, I assume that everybody knows that uh, Rex plays... Raquel in uh, in another form, uh, <laughs> so to speak. I don't think we look a thing alike. <laughs> uh, I'm not a good, 
even ask how they managed to come up with the casting. No, I tell you something. When they originally approached me with the idea of doing this thing, personally, I liked the book. I thought it was a very interesting book. I thought it made a very interesting comment on the sexual identity crisis and so forth. But I, that's it was great for reading. I didn't necessarily want to play it. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> you can do. Otherwise, it's the Christine Jorgensen story. You know, right. so I wasn't. About, I understand they cast. Didn't they? Weren't they not casting? But they didn't they test some? Uh, oh, they were testing everybody from the drag queens to, to mm -hmm. Anne Bancroft. Yeah. <laughs> now, just. <laughs> She ain't Annie Sullivan anymore. She also ain't a drag We're going to take a little break for just a minute. They were trying everything, you know. We're going to take a break for just a minute, and when we come back, I've got a little game that I'd like you to play. Great. No. I don't get to explain. I still play play. It's not that kind of game. I think you want to make an additional point about... Go ahead. Well, first I want to say that I'm going to come back on this show often because it's the first show I've ever been on in my life where I can plug a book and get zonked all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. No, I just want to say one thing, uh, because when we broke, uh, I had just said that all the drag queens were tested for Meyer Breckenridge and I got the part. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I want to explain one thing. Uh, it's, it's not a movie at all anymore about uh, someone who has a sexual operation. It's a, a mo it's a kind of Walter Mitty movie about a guy who dreams, you know, under anesthesia. He's in a car accident and he dreams that he's Raquel Welch. And uh, that may be a cop-out, but that's the only way they got me in it. Oh. <laughs> so Danny Kay would have played it 20 years ago and won an Academy Award. What can I tell you? So there, is no actual, there is no actual sex transformation then in the film any longer? No, it's just a, a, it's a fantasy. Oh. 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 <laughs> now I ask you. Can no, you see, can can you you see, the the food, you see them injecting Well, I'm interested in getting... <laughs> Patty, has, you have some interesting parallels here with Rex. Rex coming from uh, the other side of, uh, of the film industry, from a critic to becoming an actor. Your background was in theater mm -hmm. in New York. Theater and live television. And I wonder um, how it compares. We've been talking about Hollywood and, and its problems here. I wonder how you find working in films compared with television and theater. Well, uh, I find that it's impossible to make a comparison because the mm. mediums are so completely different. I also find that I really do enjoy making films, uh, sometimes more than the theater. Uh, it's a much more introspective kind of work than the theater. Uh, I have wanted recently to do a play, and the plays that I've read uh, are all with... Uh, just realized where I was about to say this. Well, are all with ladies taking their clothes off, and I really... <laughs> um, There's a lot of that in the theater. So I the really place. can't imagine myself going to a theater at 8 o'clock at night and uh, <coughs> being on the stage by 8.30 without any clothes on. I just <laughs> cannot There's... imagine running around in front of a whole audience. But I assume you've seen Old Calcutta. No, I haven't. In the movies, you have to do it at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Which really gets depressing. Right, that's that's true. very good, right? That's right. Big saving. No, I don't have to do it any time. Nobody right. ever asks me to take off my clothes. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> that may be a whole that. other subject. <laughs> I took, yes, mine. I took now, mine off in Meyer Breckenridge once for a scene. <laughs> they asked me to put them back on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's time to play the game. <laughs> I'm not going to top this. All right, we've got a game called Recognition. And this game requires a certain amount of improvisation. And it's going to work a little bit like this. I think maybe we'll start with Patty. Somebody take Patty out of the room for just a minute. And then we'll let Rex play a scene with her. As soon as we get rid of her. Get her out. No, come on, a little further away. OK, now who are we going to use for? Jack Jack Well, that. Yeah, she needs. What? She's thinking of the yeah. Barbie and Hef. No. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Another famous American love story. Columbus. Columbus and Queen Isabella. How about you? 
Ken and Barbie. Ken and Barbie, Ken and Barbie. Ken and Barbie doll. <laughs> you want to try that? <laughs> yeah, we can try that. You'll have a cute time. What is it? Oh, what is it? What is it? Ken and Barbie doll. Ken and Barbie doll. Ken and Barbie doll. That's cute. The Ken and Barbie doll. Yeah, that's good. Okay? Okay, that's good. Okay. You're going to have a great time with that one. That's a nice switcher. Why did I say that? Okay, Patty, yeah, you're going to have a great time with that one. That's a nice switcher. Why did I say that? Okay, Patty, yeah, you're going to have a great time with that one. Who could? I'm glad you suggested it. Patty? Come on in, dear. I didn't like the way you were all laughing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really We've did. got a good one for you. Oh, I bet you have. Oh, hi there. Have we been following clues? Is that a clue? <laughs> oh, start now? Start right now. Um, hello there. <laughs> 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 we do very well there, too. I know you're a penguin, so stop doing that. <laughs> Unless you like it. How do you like my new clothes? They just came off a sewing machine. His new clothes just came off a sewing machine. A little after yours, but... <laughs> they made the same shipment. They're doing very well at Disneyland. <laughs> you're, you're a penguin. <laughs> um, are you going to die when you find out what I mean? Things are at Disneyland. I yes. hear we just uh, bankrupted Mattel. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, hmm. We, I hope it's not a sponsor. It's a doll. And we... Barbie doll. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Barbie meet Ken. Yeah. Oh, right. that, that was very good, Rex. That was very good. Yeah. He's a doll. Okay, Rex, why don't you split for a minute, and we'll let Louie play one with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Put the uh, ear yeah. things on it. Okay, what are we going to do? Yeah. Joe yeah. Nemeth. The Corsican I Brothers. Corsican Brothers. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, it. Let's, let's Joe Nemeth. Yeah. And who? Okay. The who? Jet football who? player. Well, he can be anybody talking with him. In other words, you're simply yeah. talking to him as a fan or anybody yeah. that you yeah. want to be. Okay. Who? Who's Joe? Why'd you interview him? You'll have to give him a clue. Should we call him? Okay, Rex. Bring Rex on back. Bring Rex on in. Let's go. <laughs> That's hard to get to. <laughs> there we go. Oh, hello, Rex. Hi, Rex. Hi, Rex. Hi, Rex. Okay. You're Boy, right. when you get out there and you start running around and they start chasing you, <laughs> you are strong. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, uh... Do you work for a newspaper? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. So it's not Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have Remember to move down. we're trying down. to figure out who you are, Rex. Yeah. You're, You're trying to figure out who you are. Oh, I am. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I oh, knew. Well, there's certain things, when you stand there, and they start charging at you, and you <laughs> lean back, and you start running, and then people start falling down, America goes crazy. They start saying, what a guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Women weep and send I'm, mail. I'm sure they do, but. <laughs> Drex, try to play the part even though you don't know what the part is. Oh. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Getting closer already. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's very tough work, but uh, really, <laughs> the money is good. In fact, after... Yeah, you're coming right along. In fact, after tonight, it's going up. <laughs> yeah, well, you've had a lot of success, and I want to congratulate you. Um, do people... When I now I'm I'm doing this all the time, obviously. Mm -hmm. Do I do I ever have time to uh, rest? I mean, oh, 
<laughs> I would say you rest in the most delightful manner. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's important. And, and then sometimes, well, yes, I... We describe it I'm as... I'm lying down a lot, right? <laughs> I imagine that's part of the bag. Tell him how big he is on Sundays. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm very big on Sundays. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sundays all over the country, they put down the, the paper and they start looking. I'm last. There you are. <laughs> Uh, now, is he also somebody? He's somebody who works... Sometimes, but not necessarily. Oh, you work, oh, you work with me sometimes, right? Well, I can if you want it that way, but <laughs> We can both be out there. All right, let's say I do work with you. I'm your hero. I mean, you're my hero. <laughs> sometimes I give you little messages what to do for that particular day. And when you pass me by, you pass me by with such... Yeah. Such affection. <laughs> I, You're yeah. happy that I'm there. And have I suddenly uh, been... Well, I've written, written up an, an awful lot, haven't oh, I? Oh, yes, they're and always I, writing uh, about you. And Sometimes I, not so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if Rex Reed is writing. About <laughs> That's right. In yeah. Esquire. Well, he could. <laughs> I don't You're know. Not I'm, not, um, I'm not up on all of them. But I, uh, I tell you, I, you know, the L.A. Rams have been after me, but... Uh, <laughs> I can't give up uh, my bar. There you go. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ike and Tina Turner entertained us a little, a little while ago at the party, and I... I must say, you are uh, one of the most exciting groups, and I really mean this, that, uh, that I've seen in a long time. I think all the kids feel that way. Thank you. How long have you been uh, singing, Tina? Well, professionally, I've been singing for nine years. How long has the group been together? Um, well, nine years. We've kept nine? the same that was group. The start. Not the same personnel, but uh, the same amount of people for, uh, since 1960. Well, it's really wild. And the way you work to yes. together is really wild. Thank you. Now, the, the word soul, uh, has become kind of a, a popular term related to the music scene today, but you've got a word of your own, uh, grease. Right. And I, uh, I'm not familiar with it. What? Um... Well, let's see. With, uh, with me, see, with cooking. Like when you boil your vegetables. Well, I understand grease with cooking, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, so we're gonna, we're gonna use cooking first. In order, in order to boil your vegetables, you still must have the grease, right? right. It starts from the cooking at home. Right. Okay, so, uh, I have a term of saying, like, nothing was no good without the grease. So that's from there. I now, did. Now, with, uh, <laughs> with another way of saying the grease is that most uh, black people, when we say things, we say it top surface. We don't cover it or we don't go around. We say it like, like exactly really, what uh, it is. Uh -huh. Like, uh, it's nothing like, uh, say, for instance, sweat. Just we like say Ike sweat. was saying exactly. earlier, he said, you don't perspire, you sweat. Right. Uh, so in other words, when you say grease, it means getting down to the nitty-gritty, the actual thing, not hinting, just saying exactly saying it like what. it is. So well, words, I would love it if, and I know the kids would, if you would once again do it like it really is, right. would you do another number? Oh, yeah. Choo-choo-a-ball. 
Ike and Tina Turner sang a song called Come Together. Not a bad idea. So let's do just that again next week. Good night. Good night. TWA will now fly around the world via the Atlantic or Pacific from 40 U.S. cities. Take your choice, the USA, Europe, Africa, or Asia. TWA serves them all.